So as we're chewing here, we've also been picking out our pooping locations. Because you want to be able to poop in the shade, you need to find your big rock, and there's not that many that are strewn about. And so we've been sitting here and basically doing tappies on who gets which rock when it's time to poop. Bounds only for the night Waking up in different places But I stopped running for my life And all the pieces found their places My heart is home Hi guys, and welcome back to Go Roughly Around the World. Welcome to our Airbnb in San Miguel, where for the very first time ever, there's a whole lot of shit going on. This has otherwise been a very tranquil place. But so. I guess they're doing some, I don't know, construction slash gardening. So if you hear it in the background, apologies. Yeah, but at some point you gotta do the thing you gotta do. Also, what the hell are we doing sitting on a park bench? <laughs> <laughs> well, the back the backyard of the, our Airbnb has this lovely yard, and it's got this little pink uh, picnic bench. So we thought, why not uh, film here today? Yeah. So we are we're picnic benching. Yep. In so, the last episode, yeah, are we talking over each other. No, Let's go just ahead. talking over each other. Uh, in the la I'm I'm out of crapple material <laughs> for whimsy, who's just been nipping and barking. I mean, nothing is quite going to plan. Yes. Loose though that plan may be. Yep. In the last episode, Whimsy basically sucked. Yeah, she was a bit of a terror. It was difficult that those first couple weeks. And you know, this is tough because uh, we pride ourselves. I mean, we make the canine moto cockpit, right? And so if anybody should be able to just train up this dog and get her to behave herself and ride, like her, her nickname is Rides with the Wind. And she earned the hell out of it. She's been riding with a lot of wind. Um, and but she hasn't been doing it easily, I guess. No, it's been a struggle. Like she's been difficult. She's been going through all of her puppy phases at the same time as learning about the riding. Sorry for the noise. But in this episode, you're gonna see she's been doing a lot better. Like she's finally starting to calm down. She's like coming to a crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> but she is she's doing a lot better and uh we got to uh introduce her to some animals uh there was some uh, a lot of movement a lot of riding yeah yeah i mean all of that <laughs> and basically uh that's the point is um you know the dog's gonna kind of come along at its at its pace and we've been having to sort of learn her mm -hmm. and that's what we do in this episode so stick around now when things have calmed down after we've packed everything up we're ready to go and she doesn't want to go at this point she wants to sleep so that means she's going to be showing her teeth and doing all of that so we're still in the training process so after three tries we had semi success so we had to leave her a few times so that she would be a little bit calmer and wouldn't bite and it, it helped but she still needs uh more practice It may very well be the case that there is no such thing as a free lunch, but you may find that there is a free snack, like when there is a blackberry bush outside of a local market as you're passing along on the highway. This segment takes us from Gold Hill, uh, Southern Oregon area to Reno, Nevada. Why then are we traveling west towards the Oregon coast? Because just out of coincidence, there's a gentleman named Bill who lives here. He's got a little, like a, I guess a ranch house, ranch area. I guess we're gonna find out. He contacted us uh, very shortly after Moxie passed and my accident. And so we're so close, we're in the area and we wanna just take the opportunity to meet somebody in person that we've been pen palling with before we go back into our introverted, recluse style of travel. Worked with Alaska Fish and Wildlife. I've driven a truck, worked in a 
world famous Italian restaurant taught in the small Oregon towns and then the photography career which took me all over the place and now I'm just kind of a you know an old guy living on a ranch right here in this beautiful mountain retreat and I've been here 25 years um. Come. This is an amazing ecosystem. We have river otters, believe it or not. A lot of elk out here, bald eagles, mountain sheep for you know some breeding, and uh, my daughter, she's gonna bring some zebu. Uh, they're kind of a miniature cattle. We'll put those in the back. There's probably, oh, 10 bears living on this property. In fact, I was just in the back of the property and I was looking, because the berries are out and the bears come in and there's an apple tree over there. And all of a sudden I come around a bend, a bear is eating, the bear sees me, I see the bear, we both panic. And he just ran right by me, just kind of brushed as he, as he went by. The turkeys, they're like the watchdogs of the property. The coyotes can't even get close at night. And what it's done is taught my sheep not to look visually for coyotes, but to listen for the change in the bird calls. This way. One sheep was being attacked. This Sicilian burro snick, she ran over. She actually grabbed the thing by the neck. And then the sheep was like, you know, almost petrified. So the sheep dropped down. The coyote finally took off. And then the burro came around the sheep. She was laying there kind of in shock, stunned, and pressed her with his, with his uh, snout to get her up and back with the herd. So uh, nice little community of Coquille, Oregon. And uh, we just love it here. about uh, 45 minutes or so from Bill's house. And this is becoming a thing that we are having to adapt to. We are, have been very accustomed in the past to Moxie just being so capable of riding so long and so far with so little fuss. Yeah. And then you get a puppy and you have to just slow down, take more breaks and don't have such high expectations that you can cover hundreds of miles a day. But look, she's a puppy and she is doing so well for her age and for the limited amount of time that she's been riding with us. And I can't, I couldn't have asked for anything more. It's just us who have to change our mindsets. Whimsy was out there grappling around and she, I think, got caught on a blackberry bush. And you can see she's got a little, little blemish now on her snout. I'm not too sure about the way this party swings, but you like to hang about the bee until it sings. I'm right here finding out the worst in everything. Wrong place, wrong time again. Woo! It's cold. Very cold. But I wanted to come in, it looks so clean, it is really clean. Don't mind, don't bother me, I'm out of luck again. One time, two times, out of three, I'm out of luck again. Maybe you could wash my back as I could use a friend. But take your chance with me. We're about to set up our tent for the night. And like always, Whimsy wants to get involved in everything. So we bought a, um, a big beef bone that's really greasy and so she is going to enjoy the hell out of that a little bit further away over here while we set up the tent over here You're in the kitchen giving her the big goodbye Whimsy gets the zoomies in the morning. She needs a walk first thing. So one of us has the pleasure of getting up, feeding her, and then taking her for a walk down one of the trails. Like a Spanish uh, with the wine cat, uh, uh -huh. wine sex.
our hunter gatherer, mostly gather, only gatherer experiences on the road continue with the finding of this apple tree. Greg thought that there was nothing left in the tree, so I said, let's come and inspect it. And as we inspected, there are still quite a few left. I don't know what these are. These could be Macintosh. We stopped here at Eagle Lake. It's just a spectacular place to just have a little bit of lunch on our way to Reno. There's a little bit of shade here, so we pulled the bikes in and Whimsy was able to run around. She's picked up all the pine cones and chomped them all, so she is definitely enjoying herself. He's like a wormy with wings, antenna and a back antenna. Ready? And we go. There's nobody coming our way. Good job. We are going south from Reno towards Pawrop, I guess is where we have our next Airbnb. You ready? Oh. And so we're gonna take it nice and slow. We've got an off-road little stretch that we're gonna do so that we can uh, be by a river. And if we find a nice place, that's where we're going to camp out tonight. I overdid it again at the Trader Joe's just because there were so many good things. Okay, so I've got uh, apple cinnamon buns for dessert. Love how I start with that. Greg's favorite, they had figs. Look how big these are, look how many, and they all look so ripe. And then I've got croissants for breakfast. And then for Greg, he needed a new alcohol. I got him a mezcal. It's been a mixture of a little bit of sand at the beginning to get in. But all of it has been pretty good gravel, like smooth gravel. And then some of this like dried mud. And I feel, I'm feeling pretty confident. My bike is performing extremely well. It's like taking all of these rocks and I'm just sort of gliding through it. Oh God, I need to stop. Yeah. I'm not too sure about the way this party swings But you like to hang about the bee until it sings I'm right here finding out the worst in everything Wrong place, wrong time again Don't mind, don't bother me, I'm out of luck again One time, two times, out of three, I'm out of luck again she sure does. <laughs> Give her whims. And she gets goggles. She gets goggles. Oh, she got goggles. She's still a pup, so she's still in training. So this is BLM land by the Walker Lake. And uh, I saw it online. People said that it has like nice areas where you can just pull off. There's a few people that have put up campsites, and by campsites I mean RVs. So we are the only ones with tents. So when you're in a location like this with zero trees, and it's very deserty and it's quite hot, we all flock towards the lake. The problem is dunking in the water lasts for a few minutes, and that's lovely and you refresh. And that is why the best place to set up camp is up here. First thing, when you reach your campsite and find a little bit of shade, what do you do? Put your tent up. No, incorrect, false. You eat your figs. Whimsy has been crappling around. She then stole the outing equipment for making our espresso in the morning. So she spent a little bit of time in the clink by which we mean on a, the tether. So a little jail time worked for her. Whimsy. Wow. 
that was gonna be a joke. Like she was just kind of digging up a little, got a little on my pants, and then she fucking mm -hmm. right on cue just started like shelling me. She's like put me under attack. She wanted to so dig her grave. Dig her grave. We've taken a little bit of shelter in the shade of this big rock. And as we sit here uh, responding to a few customers and just, you know, chewing the fat. And in Whimsy's case, chewing the weeds, chewing a stick, mm -hmm. or maybe that's a cow patty. You, you never know. So as we're chewing here, we've also been picking out our pooping locations. Because you want to be able to poop in the shade, you need to find your big rock. And there's not that many that are strewn about. And so we've been sitting here and basically doing tappies on who gets which rock when it's time to poop. One, two, three, four. Hi guys, and welcome to Go Roughly Around the World. We're riding around the world. Still doing that? No, we're not. Come on, over here if you want to be a- Oh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Whimsy here is laying like a lioness in the savanna. Yeah, ready? So. Even though I like peed twice before I got in the tent, I was coming to bed fully loaded. Hmm. I bet. I just can't learn this lesson. For dinner tonight, we have pasta with basil and pesto. And then for dinner, dessert. Everything's better on a full fig stomach. What did I want to say? About the pooping rock. Video. Oh, yes. <laughs> the pooping rock. So, morning time now. Oh, Whimsy's comfort at my expense. So, that's a go roughly morning.